Yeah. Evening, gents. Um, yeah, I trust that you you are all well and safe and healthy, um, particularly during these these difficult times. It's a real honour for me uh, to speak to you on the on the night of your um, of your reunion. Um, it's unbelievable to think that uh, you guys have been out of school for for twenty five years already. Um, yeah, if uh, Martin's asked me just to speak very briefly about the, the 95 uh, Reds and um, yeah, I must say it, it's a team that um, I've got fond, fond memories of and I'm sure people that watched you also have, have fond memories. Um, I do believe it's a team that never really received the accolades that it, that it deserves um, because you, um, you played some, some fine rugby. The um, ability to to make passes in the tackle, to move the ball away from the contact area quickly, to have runners support runners coming on at pace, um, and the overall skill of your of everyone in the team uh, made you a very very one difficult team I believe to play against and defend, um, but equally so a, a team that was really really entertaining to watch and a joy to 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 watch. Um, yeah, you know, you to to win fourteen of your seventeen games, and you had some really really tough games. Um, says a lot, um, and and that record does speak for itself. So um, yeah, it was a real honour to, and a privilege to to coach you guys. Yeah, I have got limited time, so I'm not going to run through individual players. So I'll I'll just really run through through the season as it went. Um, yeah, the Krugersdorp game, um, so I can't really remember much of that, to be honest, but we won it quite, um, quite comfortably. And then we moved on to play um, Parktown. Parktown really felt that they had a powerhouse, powerhouse side that year and that they, they can get it for the taking. And they believed that this was, was their year. And um, they arrived at King Edwards full of confidence. So um, and all the hype was around their team. All their supporters were there. So it was very easy to, to motivate the, the Reds that day. You just basically told them, well, let's go destroy these acts, destroy their year for them. One game, we can send them packing. And um, yeah, it wasn't very pretty, difficult conditions. It was raining even at times. And um, yeah, we won that scrappy game. And um, yeah, just my, my memories are after the game, um, going up to the park time players just to thank them for the game. And um, yeah, they were inconsolable. Their, their captain, who, who actually went on to play for Transvaal Schools, he wasn't a bad player, um, was just in, in tears. And uh, but anyway, it was was nice to tell them, bad luck, boys, go back to park time. Um, yeah, then I think we went off to we didn't go to Saints Week. It was the first time King, King Edwards hadn't gone to to St Stephen's Week, so we took a bit of flack for that. But we felt it was best to to get you guys away from the Joburg Hub. And um, yeah, let's test out another festival. So we went to, to Grey PE. Um, yeah, and it's just never easy to, to play there. We, we played Framesby. And since, since living in PE, I've, I've really got to realise how what a powerhouse rugby school Framesby is. So to beat them in Port Elizabeth was, was a great effort. We then played, a, well, we played an academy side as well. And um, I know they had a guy, Sean Plikies, who went on to skip at SA schools. They would have had a couple of SA schools players in that team, useful team, um, and so it was a good effort to beat them. But the real highlight of that festival was was beating Grey Grey PE. They they were hurting from the year before, where they'd been to been touring in Johannesburg, and uh, they played against us in in '94, and they they caught us on a on a good day. Well, a good day for King Edwards, and I, I think we probably gave them close to to 50 points. But it was just one of those days where everything clicked, and and we were magnificent. Um, so yeah, they were hurting, and yeah, and rightfully so. They wanted to have revenge, so they set us up. Rightfully so. I've got no, no complaints about that. And um, yeah, we played them the main game the Saturday. Probably the whole of PE they were watching all the great old boys, and um, yeah, it was a it was a tough game. We were, the wind was pumping, as as only it can in, in Port Elizabeth, and we we played with the wind. The wind was behind your back, it wasn't a cross field, it was just either behind your back or you were playing into it. And we had the wind behind us in the first half and we got quite a nice lead. And then uh, in the second half, we, we had to defend, well, sorry, you guys had to defend, so your lives depended on it. And um, yeah, it was a, um, you know, an amazing show of grit and determination, guts. 
um, to hold to hold Gray back. I remember at times Manfred taking a 22 dropout and the, the ball not even crossing the 22, 22 line and going back to, or virtually to our try line. So um, that was very difficult to exit and get out of our 22 to relieve the pressure. So it really was on and uh, to come away there with a, a win was a, a magnificent effort. Yeah, I remember that also for that for that festival we um, we went up by train. Um, yeah, and that was a, a wonderful experience. I know on the way back we said that you guys could have a beer each. Mm, yeah, I can leave you to discuss that a bit later. I'm sure it went more than one beer, no New Yorks. Um, <laughs> yeah, then back at King Edwards, back at home. Um, yeah, we, funny enough, we had Monument was our next game. And um, Monument, we had Grey as well, and we'd watched them there. And they, they, didn't, have a, they didn't seem to have a very particularly strong side that year. So yeah, um, we were confident that, that we could beat them and perhaps we were a bit too overconfident in that game. Um, so we played them at King Edwards and we went down. I wasn't, it was a close game, high scoring game, but um, yeah, it was disappointing because it really was a year that, um, that, that we, we could have beaten them. Um, and um, yeah, so that was a, a bit upsetting. But I remember from that game, we, Wayne, Wayne Grieve was thrown in the deep end. It might have even been his debut. And we had to play him at fullback, I think. And um, you know, he was bombarded with, with up and unders. But um, you know, Wayne, being Wayne, just uh, obviously just never let the side down. But I, I distinctly remember us having to play him out of position that uh, that game against um, Monument. Then um, yeah, I can't remember the order, um, but uh, we had four and two, terrible game. Um, and why were we even playing those like, so, I don't know, it was a, a scrappy game, just a horrible fixture. But unfortunately, we also went down. Um, close game, but my overriding memories of that game was they had a hooker who went on to play provincial rugby quite a, quite a couple of games for Free State and for Transvaal, I think. I can't remember his name at the moment, but um, I remember he clapped Neil, Neil Jacobs, but he gave him a proper hit that, uh, that could be heard probably up at Yeovil. And um, well, how Neil managed to stand up afterwards, I, I don't know. But um, what I do remember he's this foreign to hooker was sent to the, to the sin bin. Those are the days you didn't get a red card for hitting someone who got sent to the sin bin. Obviously, he was a bit of a hero. And I remember him running back on the field. And um, the coach, their coach was a guy by the name of Franz Ludica. He went on to coach the Bulls. And um, yeah, France ran past him and he ran past France. And they gave one each other a half five. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a sour tasting. In, um, in my mouth that I didn't think it was right. Yeah, and then um, DHS, so we went to DHS. DHS was had a, a very, very good side. Um, they actually went to Saints Week that year and the news coming back to us after when we were arriving back in Joburg from, from Port Elizabeth was that um, yeah, DHS were proper. Um, they had sort of, everyone was talking about them and how good they were at, at Saints Festival. So we knew we were up against it. Um, yeah, and again, we, we played out of our socks that day at, at DHS. Um, magnificent performance by the guys. Um, yeah, and look, I don't like to complain about referees. I, I believe you, you mustn't sort of even give them a chance of controlling the game. You must just make sure you, you're so much better than the opposition. And unfortunately, that game, yeah, it was a tight game. And I do believe that we lost, we lost because of the ref. And, you know, the last minute he sort of manoeuvred the game a couple of penalties so eventually it got to R22 in front of the poles conveniently where they kicked the winning penalty and the final whistle went yeah so that was sad because I, I certainly didn't believe that we should have lost to them we played all the rugby that day um and then the other game then Northwood yeah it was an easy win yeah and then back in Joburg we Pretoria boys yeah I mean we had lost to them at King Edwards in, in 94 and um yeah that was it was still hurting I'm still here to do today, to tell you the truth. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we needed a bit of revenge, but they'd had a young side in 94. They had a very young side. Um, and so, you know, 95, they were obviously very, very confident, rightfully so. Um, and, um, yeah, we went up to Pretoria, not an easy place to, to play in. Um, and, um, yeah, look, I mean, that's where I read. I'm reminded that I, I gave Erica a good little motivating club <laughs> which uh, i must say really does uh, does embarrass me particularly now as i'm a primary school headmaster and you, you don't behave that way <laughs> but i don't know for some reason i must have been hell of a fired up 
And um, yeah, not that I'm in the country, it's going to be fired up, it should be the players. But um, yeah, apparently it, it worked because um, you know, Eric led from the front and um, well, everyone just contributed as, as we expect of King Edward's boys on big occasions like that. And um, yeah, uh, a magnificent win for us. And one surely that yeah, one is that that's really, really, I remember quite fondly. Um, and I'm sure you guys too, special victory. Um, the one thing I do remember about that game is that rugby related, that um, after the game, everyone was on the field and obviously happy. And um, Mrs. McMurray, who was always very prim and proper, she just came up to me. She just gave me this huge hug. Oh, just, and she's oh, wonderful. Congratulations. You don't know what this means to us and to Bruce. <laughs> um, and uh, I can tell you why. is because um, Mr. McMurray, and uh, he didn't like um, the headmaster of Pretoria boys, Bull Schroeder. Two of them, uh, they <laughs> boxed. So I think for, for Mr. McMurray to get one over Pretoria boys um, in Pretoria, and um, he was a humble one, uh, Mr. McMurray. And, uh, but I know that day, he, I promise you, he savoured that victory. Uh, he didn't show it, but I know that he was he was chuffed. <laughs> um, yeah, then, then after that, um, yeah, the last um, couple of the games of this, no, no, we had JP, that's right, we had JP. Yeah, we, it was a close game. Um, but you know, we kept Jeppy in the game. I think we were well up at half time and for some reason took our foot off the pedal when they were there for the taking and we could have given them a proper hiding. Um, yeah, and I think they came back within four points or so. But they were never going to beat us. We were a much better side of them. And I, although it got a bit close towards the end, I, I never really thought that uh, we were in danger during that game. It was just sad that we had an opportunity to really thump them and we didn't. St. John's, um, yeah, close up until half time, and then second half we, we ran away with it, gave them a good hiding. Um, what I remember from the St. John's game, I'm sure it is the St. John's game, another thing you guys can have a discussion discussion about later, was I'm sure David Mulherbert crossed their try line when it was still tight and he dropped the ball or he did something. And, um, and yeah, I don't know, I gave him a real bollocking. I'm sure it was St. John's at half time. I think another thing I'm being embarrassed about, but anyway. Sorry, David. Um, but, um, yeah, we won that game quite comfortably. And then the last couple of games, we, yeah, Poch, we thumped them, really played some great rugby. Randberg beat them easily. Um, and then St. Stidians, our last game of the season, the day of the World Cup final. And, um, yeah, we turned up that game and, and I really felt we were, we were on top of the game. We, we beat them comfortably by about 20-odd points, but it, it could have been far more. We... We really, we really played well that, that day, but for some reason, the ref, Roger Hay, he was um, a good, he, I knew quite well from my days in the tell. And um, yeah, Roger, for, for some reason, I think he'd been out the night before and he wasn't into running around a lot and sort of with us throwing the ball around. So he, he kept he kept the game tight. He, he blew for stupid things and he never let the game really flow. And it was one of those days, I believe, that if he had let the game flow, we would have seen some some champagne rugby because um, we were really up for it and we showed in glimpses when he let the game flow that uh, that um, yeah we were at our best that day yeah so um, yeah looking back as I said um, fourteen wins out of seventeen was uh, is a really really fine effort and uh, played some wonderful rugby um, along the way really really exciting game to watch um, small pack of forwards. Um, but, um, but some really, really skillful players, you're all skillful, as I said, could all handle the ball, make passes under pressure, um, support, run the right lines. Um, but there was a toughness as well, you know, your Eric's, um, your Stevens, rest in peace, Stephen, I was very sad to hear about him. Um, Tyron, um, yeah, all guys uncompromising, tough buggers. Um, yeah, and then in the, in the back line, um, yeah, Manfred, Ryan, Whitehouse, um, really, really skillful. Rudy, solid as a rocket fullback. I know we always used to tease him about um, about his speed, and yeah, but he went on and played a number of games, provincial games. So it was really great to see Rudy. And um, yeah, I was a bit worried about your hairstyle at times when you were playing for the Sharks, but um, yeah, he did. He fine rugby player. Congrats, congratulations on all that you did achieve after school. And the two wings, I think Sasha was probably the um, the highest um, try scorer. Strong, very difficult to stop. Jonah, Jonah Lona, top player, and then you know, David on the um, 
on the other wing. You know, I would like to have actually gone through every single player than I had in a previous video, but it just took up too much time to to download. But every single one of you did the did the red jersey proud, and um, yeah, you did what is expected. You know that when you 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 pull that jersey over your head, um, there's a certain expectation, and um, and you guys met that expectation, and uh, you played with a, a lot of pride, and it was a, a joy to 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 coach you. And uh, I know Cedric Finlayson. I mean, he did a fantastic job with the backs. Um, a very very thorough coach, um, yeah, tactical, great, and a joy to coach with him. I just remember to the backs had so many moves. Every time I looked, he would be telling me, "Come look, I've got another move with the backs." I'm like, "Oh my goodness gracious!" Because I was one, I didn't, I didn't like to have too many planned moves. I like to rather just give the guys the skills and just call it as you see it. But see, I Cedric believed in the moves, and um, yeah, it was good to see them come off. Um, yeah, but I do see him from time to time, and he, yeah, he hasn't changed. Um, you know, he still speaks very quietly, and you've got to listen carefully, and he throws his one-liners in and waits for you to laugh. Um, but I never give him that pleasure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know we, we do talk about you guys and what, what a joy it was to, to coach you. And then, um, yeah, look, I, you know, I'm sorry for all other guys to listen just about rugby, because so I know some of you were... Yeah, disappointed not to play in that side. I think Ryan Whitehouse um, springs to mind. Um, Stephen Nodell, I know Courtney Mort was, was injured. Um, the two copses, I'm sure, would have loved to have played in the Reds. None of, none of you guys would have actually let the team down. And you would have been worthy of that, of that jersey. So it's sad that you, you didn't get that, um, that opportunity. So yeah, guys. Um, yeah, another thing that I remember that just off the rugby was, um, as I said, it was the day before the World Cup final. The box, I don't know if you can remember, came down to, to King Edwards to, <laughs> to practice have their captain's run, and uh, yeah, we all knew about it. And Mr. McMurray instruction came to the teachers, don't uh, don't let the boys out early. We will send a message. My classroom was below the geography block where Chris Moffat and Bill Fry. The, the teaching, rest in peace, great man. And um, yeah, we uh, we saw the, the small bus arrive, and when that was us, we, we were at the classroom stuff. As we weren't waiting out onto the stand, and I remember the box practicing. They were dreadful. Actually, I remember they were dropping the ball, and yeah, it was really, really dreadful. Um, and actually, um, it was either Catch Christie or or um, Francois Pin in the book said that they were dreadful that day. But so my overriding memory was there that all the whole school was, was on the stand, and I think the preppies were there as well. And um, I'll, I'll never forget Michael Wilmot. And uh, he, he went up and he said to you guys, we're going to give a war cry. You're all going to do, give a war cry. And he said to you, right, boys, let's give it to the Boca or for the Boca. And just the way he said Boca, I don't know, I just I remember so clearly. And um, you guys just gave a, a magnificent um, war cry. Anyway, guys, yeah, I do hope you enjoy your evening. Um, yeah, just to say that, um, you know, as a South African, obviously, the box you know, is number one on my list. Um, and I'm a very keen Stormers supporter, um, I'm a passionate Liverpool supporter. But uh, there's no doubt that uh, my, the, the team that are, that are virtually on par with the box are, are the Reds. And I, and I mean that quite sincerely. I, um, yeah, I follow the school very closely. Um, I follow the rugby very closely, um, and uh, you know, on Saturday mornings during rugby season, I'm missing it at the moment. Although I'm, I've got obviously my own school sports, um, you know, I'm, I'm following Twitter all the time to sort of following that the red score. And um, you know, sometimes when the game's a bit close, you're also watching the time. And I'm, Come on, the game should be over now, or you know, surely the final whistle's gone and we're beating boys out again. We're beating Jeppy again. Um, you know, um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's Saturday mornings, I still, my, my heart's there watching King Edwards play and, and hoping that, uh, that they do that red jersey proud. So guys, yeah, have a wonderful evening. Whenever you are down in the Eastern Cape, yeah, please look me up. Um, yeah, it'd be great to see you. But um, yeah, thanks again for having the opportunity to share a couple of memories with you. I mean, there's a lot more and I could probably speak the whole night. Um, but, um, yeah, have a have a great evening, and I'm sure you uh, you're going to share some some wonderful some <laughs> wonderful stories with one another. Cheers, guys.